Hey everyone, E3 is almost here, and you know what that means. It's prediction time, that's right. We got the entire crew here today, along with a very special guest being Stealth. Stealth, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. You've been pretty much everywhere else. I'm like, it's time we finally got Stealth on to discuss what they're hoping and predicting for E3 2021, specifically from Nintendo. Now, real quick, we are basically having two discussions. We're going to have a follow-up discussion where we dive into the nitty-gritty of who we're expecting for Smash Brothers, if Smash Brothers will even be there, which we will be predi predicting in this discussion. We're talking about Nintendo in general, including, as I said, if Smash will be there. But again, the intricacies of the characters themselves will be held for a second discussion with another special guest. So stay tuned for that. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, without the way, um, let's, let's start off with how excited are you guys right now for, for Nintendo at E3 2021? Are you hyped? What, what's your level at? Uh, let's start with you, Stealth. How excited are you going into the show? Uh, I'm a good 10 out of 10. Um, you know, I normally take a vacation around E3 time and really the Nintendo Direct in general. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I wish I could take a vacation around E3 time. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I, think, I wish we all could. <laughs> Chris, how about you? What's your hype level at? 10 out of 10, all the way. Man. So excited. Like, I, I, I opened up a Google Doc and I named it Nintendo E3 21 Predictions, or 2021, and I just sat there and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, this is happening. This is awesome. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm super pumped. That's awesome. It's been a long time coming. It's been a two year gap now between E3. So, yeah, let's see. Hopefully, Nintendo brings it. Tom, where are you at? <laughs> I'm at a 9 out of 10, because I like to temper expectations <laughs> just a little bit and be pleasantly, you know, uh, surprised. Uh, but yeah, two years, uh, that has raised my normal level of hype prediction. Are, I think we've got something in, good in store. Are you sure that's just not the old man jadedness coming through with your... <laughs> Back in my day, we had 10 new IPs. <laughs> Joey, fill us in. Where are you at? I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. Uh, I want to be at a ten, but I'm so scared of getting too excited for this event. Like I know COVID has affected a lot of things, just about not just for Nintendo, but just game development in general. And like I want to be, you know, as a Metroid fan, I want to be really, really, really excited. Mm -hmm. But I'm afraid of just getting let down again for the fourth mm -hmm. year in a row. Actually, <laughs> well, it wouldn't be the fourth year in a row. It's been four years since Prime Four got announced. But well, how many years has it been since Blast that Ball? That's <laughs> it's been that long. <laughs> oh. Yeah, spent. That should have never happened. <laughs> Tris, how are you feeling? I'm gonna have to agree with Tom. I'm at a nine out of ten, but in, and not in the case of I'm tempering my expectations, but because I want some sort of big reveal to be what pushes me over to that ten in the middle of the show. Uh, cons consistently, I think there's only been like one E3 that I was actually disappointed by. Even the ones that people kind of consider eh, I tend to be generally positive and excited about. So. Nintendo E3 in general, I'm already pretty high up there, so I'm actually very, very excited. Which one was the one you were disappointed by? Was it E3 2015? Yes, it was. I knew actually. it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the only one in recent years I've been like pretty meh on. And even then, there were good things like Mario Maker. <laughs> like Metroid Prime Blast Ball. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Maker was amazing. It did save that year, effectively. Yeah. Uh, myself, I would say I'm, I'm probably at a 9, I think. You know, we got presumably Breath of the Wild 2. I assume we'll discuss that soon enough. Uh, <laughs> we have rumors, you know, some, uh, at least a, a rumor of an upcoming game. I'm personally uh, super hyped for if that ends up being the case. Um, and of course, you know, it's it, it's always the unknown, right? Like the unknown is always kind of like what makes us so exciting. We don't know what else is going to be here. Now, granted, that usually leads to disappointment, but still, <laughs> I haven't learned. I'm excited. <laughs> so, <laughs> with that out of the way, I think it's about time to get into uh, basically our predictions. Though I wanted to open up with. Uh, a couple of broad topics, and number one is Switch Pro. <laughs> there have been a lot of rumblings over the past couple of weeks about an announcement being imminent, and well, time's pretty much run now for that to be announced before E3, unless it happens on uh, either tomorrow or Monday. And uh, that seems a little unlike, or by tomorrow, I mean probably yesterday by the time this video goes up. So basically one day left. What do you guys think? Is there a chance Switch Pro is happening? What do you think is going on with those rumors? Do you think we see it before or at E3? What what's the what's the general vibe on this? Stealth, let's start off with you. How are you uh, feeling about this? You know, everyone really convinced me that it was going to be announced before E3, um, but so much time has passed that I just think it's too late. And you know, part part of the rumors were saying that you know developers wanted to show their pro, quote unquote, versions of the game. So I'm I'm wondering 
you know, if they're still going to show them, but they're not going to say it's running on Pro or how that's going to work. Um, I'm pretty convinced that the Direct is going to be 100% software. I don't think they're going to slip in a Pro announcement. Um, but yeah, I, I'm definitely in the, it, it's real, but it's coming after E3 Cam. Mm. Yeah, that's exactly how I'm feeling with it. And uh, especially since you mentioned it, it's all software E3, I can definitely see uh, people looking back on E3 in retrospect of some of those things that are a little too good for the Switch, and including during like the Treehouse, and then during like later in the summer. They're like, surprise, this is why it actually looked pretty good back at E3. You had a slight sneak peek at what it actually looked like, <laughs> but you never saw it. I'm just like... ready for the Switch Pro rumors to end. The only thing that I'm disappointed by for the Switch Pro not being announced yet is because we still have to keep hearing about the darn thing. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I think it's going to, the window has passed, like uh, Stealth was saying. I think it's going to be at a time, even if it's only two weeks after E3 to be announced, when it's kind of got all the attention to itself and doesn't have to compete against other E3 announcements. And I want to say it's not going to be called Switch Pro. I'm calling Switch DX as the name. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Public Adventure DX, the director's cut. <laughs> yeah. No, I suppose you know, we should... I'll... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, I'll be the one to say it. I think it could be shown in the direct. Okay. I mean, I don't really know. No one knows. Um, but I do think it's interesting. This this year's E3 is different. Um, one, I just have a hunch. I think it could happen after all the rumors and all the buildup. But also... Mm. Nintendo's not doing their Direct until the tail end of E3, and I do feel like that could be a conscious move. It's possible they really want to end this with a bang, and, you know, be the thing that people are talking about after E3. And what better, better way to do that than with Switch Pro, or new Switch, so I think it could happen. I like your optimism. <laughs> I, I yeah. love that. I mean, it'd be cool <laughs> if it happened. Uh, I, Tris, you did the uh, news update on Nintendo's E3 announcement. I forget, did they mention yep. anything about the hardware? That did they say it'd be it, there would be any hardware announcements? Or? They specifically said on like Nintendo Switch titles. They made it seem pretty clear like it's it's the software that's the focus. Um, they didn't explicitly say no hardware because I think that would be very telling in a whole different way. But they, I'm pretty sure they made sure to say Switch software. Right, so, so that does lay, I mean, that does let the door open. So it is possible there could be a Switch Two, a Switch Pro there, or a Switch DX, which whatever you want to call this thing, a Switcher. <laughs> I don't care. Switcher. I I I don't know. At this point, I'm a little skeptical. Uh, I mean, actually, I do know. I am skeptical of it happening by E3 at this point. Nintendo doesn't typically make hardware uh, like uh, revision announcements at E3. I would love to be wrong, um, especially if they use it to showcase like. You know, paired with like uh, why Breath of the Wild 2 looks as good as it presumably will, you know, and things of that, or as good as it could, I suppose. Um, and I think I think it's something that we we'll probably see later down the line. I mean, I think, I mean, it, at this point, I mean, obviously there's gonna be a successor of some kind to the Switch. Like, even if the rumors, <laughs> I mean, even if whether the rumors or not were based on anything, they're gonna end up being true at some point in time. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. And I'm starting to think it might maybe next year might be it, but you know, hey, I hope I'm wrong. I would love to see uh, an announcement of it there and showing what it can add to the games, while also you know uh, what with those same games also working on the current Switch as well. But I'm pretty sure they announced the Switch Lite also like a month after E3, so mm -hmm. you know anything is possible mm -hmm. at that point. It'll, and I think the rumors are true. It'll come eventually. Don't know when, but it was definitely not going to be before E3. Mm -hmm. In hindsight, <laughs> that was like, yeah, not not true. <laughs> Nintendo's usually saved the pre E3 okay. announcements for like major new platforms, like the Wii name or the three or the idea of a 3DS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's definitely true. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think that was definitely the leading into E3 after two years, uh, the hype of that getting to everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I think part of the uh, part of the reason for it is Nintendo likes to, you know, they very much like to control the message. And if we're talking about the pro, are we talking, are we going to be talking about the games as much as they want us to be, you know? Um, I mean, everything's, you know, everything's marketing related. Maybe, maybe it would be. I don't know. It's hard to say. With, with Nintendo, you never truly know. And that is what's exciting. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, another kind of like umbrella topic I want to bring up, and that is Zelda's 35th. We recently had rumor, uh, or not even rumor, ba we basically saw a poster that's going to be uh, apparently given away at GameStop as part of 
some kind of thing, uh, presumably, or assume, I assume a pre-order campaign for something. On the poster, we can see several generations of uh, Link and Zelda from like games like Twilight Princess, uh, Wind Waker, and Ocarina of Time. And specifically, I believe in their in the H they use the HD and 3DS assets. I I believe. Um, so of course, everyone's speculating on what this means. Like, <laughs> is it tying to a 35th anniversary? Is it just some random Nintendo thing that they do? Because Nintendo loves to do stuff like that occasionally. What what do we make of this? Um, yeah, stealth. Let's start off with you again. What do you kind of think? Where, are you feeling anything in terms of the 35th year at E3? Yeah, I mean, I feel like the focus is going to be on Skyward Sword HD and hopefully Breath of the Wild too. Um, and they might say like, stay tuned later in the summer for a Zelda 35th Direct or something like that. Um, I, I just can't see them announcing like five Zelda games here, like they did for the Mario Direct. It would be a separate event, I feel like. But um. You know, I, I do feel pretty confident that they wouldn't be putting this much effort in if all they were talking about was Skyward Sword. So I, I do feel like there's a really good chance we're going to get some meaty Breath of the Wild 2 information. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Yeah, uh, they're double staffing that day too at GameStop, which I heard, you know, could just be that because uh, GameStop's also getting stock of PS5s and Series X and S's. But, you know, I also, the thought did cross my mind, maybe it's because they're doing another limited edition Zelda uh, collection thing oh, no. that they did with, <laughs> I know, oh no. <laughs> and what other reason would GameStop's be crowded other than people are trying to murder each other to get that collection? <laughs> uh... Tris, you want to go next? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm Tom trying to figure so out. Tired out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to best go about this because I, I definitely think we'll see Zelda. I mean, I'm, I'm literally in my Wind Waker hoodie and I have my little Toon Link up here because I, I want to see Wind Waker HD. But I don't feel like we'll see like a big collection. We're not going to see a, a Zelda equivalent of the Mario 35th Anniversary Direct squeezed into this. E3 direct, I think. I think we can get a decent amount of Zelda there, and then maybe they'll say, like, we have... We'll have more news on the 35th anniversary of Zelda later this year, so stay tuned. And that that alone would be it. But um, specifically with that poster that's getting everyone excited, I mean, just them name-dropping that, and then when anyone goes to GameStop about the E3, oh yeah, look, there's a poster, because they've officially mentioned the name of Zelda's 35th anniversary, or they name dropped the fact that it is the 35th anniversary. Um, I don't think the poster itself actually means much. I mean, there was a poster for the 30th anniversary, and I can't offhand think about what came specifically bundled with the 30th, 30th anniversary of the game. Was it Twilight Princess um, HD? It might have been, but I don't believe the posters were actually bundled with anything. I know mm -hmm. that um, from what we saw of this poster, and since, since we had reported on it, more images have actually come forward of the poster. Um, the back of it, because it's like a front and back, it looks almost identical to the 30th anniversary, but styled a little bit differently. So it's very clearly just, uh, here's a bunch of art and games that are represented use the most recent version of that game to have their art represented. So Wind Waker HD, Twilight Princess HD. And it's just a collage, basically, of a bunch of references to Zelda throughout the series. And woo, 35 years of it. But I don't think it's getting paired in anything because... Skyward Sword HD comes out relatively soon, and we know that has its own pre-order bonus of its own poster, so. I hope they don't spend too much time on Skyward Sword <laughs> HD if they bring it up. In the yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I think Skyward Sword, like, it might be three minutes max. I mean, it's very soon. It's, although, mm -hmm. like, the latest release we know about in the upcoming short-term window. Um, we did have all those, those trademarks renewed earlier in the year, so it is possible those at some point will be brought up for a new sort of uh, anniversary collection, That's uh, but seeing what you know, what Joey thought, it might not be the right time to announce it yet and still say, mm -hmm. have a Zelda Direct later. Like, yeah. it'd be cool, but maybe E3 is not the time to do that. I do think, by the way, on Skyward Sword, where you said you'll get like a three minute thing. I actually think we won't see Skyward Sword at all during the Direct. We'll see it during Treehouse because they'll want to show the motion controls. I hope so. Yeah. And I hope it. I hope they mess up so bad. <laughs> like, you do 2010 style. I hope Miyamoto's out there again, you know. <laughs> yeah, Miyamoto's him out like, Bill. <laughs> guys, Miyamoto's recovered from Skyward Sword. He's going to try motion controls again. Then, like, it doesn't work. And there's, like, flashbacks. <laughs> oh, they, no. ask, they ask all of us at home to turn off our phones and... Uh... Yes, exactly. <laughs> 
Oh man, yeah, I, I don't think we'll see Skyward Sword in the in the directors. I forgot to mention it's 40 minutes, I believe they announced is around 40 yep. minutes, which is typical length for Nintendo. Uh, which is a little bit shorter compared to the press conference we've been, we've been reliving the past uh, 10 to 20 uh, years ago, where it used to be over an hour. Um, well, they did announce like 20 minutes worth of content in those It's true, exactly. Presentations. Absolutely, lots of talking in those. So, <laughs> myself, yeah, I, I think I agree. I don't think we're going to get like an HD collection here uh, at E3. I don't think we'll see much of Skyward Sword except during a Treehouse Live. Um, but I do think they will announce Zelda's 35th anniversary here. I think they'll tease, like, future announcements coming up, I think, as Stealth mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, I think we will get a Zelda Direct later on in the year. And that might, that might be what a poster ties into, be like an HD collection of all those older games. But it doesn't make sense to focus on that now, uh, while Skyward Sword HD is coming up in the, in the immediate future. And to yeah. that point, I'm making a prediction that, I mean, obviously we're going to see, I, I don't think anyone's doubting that we'll see Breath of the Wild 2 here. And if you do, speak up now. <laughs> um, but I am predicting we're going to see it in 2022. I don't think it's coming out this year. And in fact, the, the, the email or press release from Nintendo even opened the door to this idea with that they're focusing on, that they're focusing on titles from this year, but... Uh, they basically suggested there will be some from next year as well. And I think Breath of the Wild 2 will be one of them. I think that could be an early mm -hmm. 2022 title, and I think it's going to miss this year. Mm -hmm. I, well, Nintendo says that every year with their directs. They say, like, we're only focusing, we're mostly, not only, mostly focusing on titles for this year, but they still announce a ton of stuff that are coming out, like, later on. And I mean, like, much later on. Uh, Prime 4, for example, but even then, that Direct had games that weren't even coming out until next year, so. And and yeah. we know games coming next year as well already, like Splatoon 3, so. Mm -hmm, exactly. Mm -hmm. And if we speculate that there's going to be some sort of collection for Zelda's anniversary, we can probably assume that that'll come after Skyward Sword, but before Breath of the Wild 2, or the Breath of the Wild yep. sequel, just because... Yeah, that I think that probably <laughs> makes the most sense. I mean, it makes sense to kind of end Zelda's anniversary in a, in a way. Um, with the Breath of the Wild sequel, or at least mm -hmm. not undermine it right after the fact with the collection of three other Zelda games. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You bring a good point many. there. <laughs> you bring a good point there, and to Andre's point of uh, thinking it's going to come in 2022, I actually want to take that further, and I want to say I think we're going to see it released on the anniversary of Breath of the Wild. March yeah. 3rd, 2022 is a Thursday. So that's right around, no when things come out like Thursday, Friday time. So I can see it coming out then as an anniversary to it, and if that's their big title for that March, that basically wraps up that fiscal year, too. So. I thought you were going to go a step further and say, I think it's coming out in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... No, step further to more specific. <laughs> yeah, I would be I would be slightly annoyed if it came out on the anniversary of Breath of the Wild because a lot of us were like, oh, if they make a Breath of the Wild sequel with using reusing the same assets as Breath of the Wild, then that game would come out way sooner. And now it's like the typical wait time that we usually wait for Zelda games, which I'm sure COVID had a lot to do with that. But it's still kind of just like, mm, you were so close. Yeah, the, the <laughs> development for Breath of the Wild 2 has been nearly as long as the development for the original Breath of the Wild at this point. And that's, uh, that's interesting. It's making, me th it's making me wonder what are they doing here. So real quick, who does anyone think is coming out this year? I simply just I can't did. fathom it. Uh, before this discussion, but you guys convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know if I even convinced myself. I'm just saying it. <laughs> I just yeah, I, I, I actually thought there was a chance it could come out last year, but, you know, COVID messed everything up. Um, you know, we don't really know how far along the game is. We haven't seen it at all. I mean, it. you know, Nintendo might do that thing where, oh, it's announced and out in two months, you know? <laughs> That'd be amazing. Or however, right? you know, it's wow. possible. We just don't know. Um, you know, we know that, you know, Monolith Soft has been a support team on, you know, this Zelda game and they've been just ramping up pretty much every quarter on new employees. And, you know, so I, I, I think it's a lot farther along than people maybe think it is just because they haven't seen it, you know, since it was mm -hmm. announced. Yeah, yeah. And also look at Age of Calamity, which is obviously a different situation, but still it's in the same world and it's a lot of the same audience. Uh, I think that was a pretty quick turnaround from when it was announced to when it was released. It was maybe a yeah, few months, fun. not exactly yep. sure, and it went great. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously yep. this one's already been announced, so we already know about it. So that could definitely happen. Yeah, Actually, I don't know. Uh, go on, Tristan. Uh, I, I was going to say, bringing up Age of Climbing brings, brings a good point, because we know Age of Climbing is getting DLC, which I think we'll see here. But uh, yeah, because one, one comes out this month, and the other comes out in November. And I kind of feel like... Maybe that means we won't see Breath of the Wild 2 and uh, releasing until sometime after Age of Calamity's done. Like, done, done. Because I don't <laughs> think they'll want to muddle those together at all. Mm -hmm. But 
Or yeah. it could come before the second part of it, <laughs> and then the second part of it could be themed around Breath of the Wild. Too. Oh, no. That's true, too. Very true. I, yeah, I, 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 I was going to say, Joy, I was sorry. You can go next. No, but, uh, I was wondering, when he, uh, I looked back at A.G. Ionuma saying, like, we'll see more details, like, later this year, or kind of like kind of like a soonish type feeling to it. Like, it feels like when you say that, you mean E3. <laughs> and I wonder if Breath of the Wild 2 might have another trailer or something just to serve as the uh, dang the ultimate dangling carrot and the reason to have a Switch <laughs> in the future. Uh, but maybe take longer because it's got to be out on two platforms at this point, being a Switch mm -hmm. and Switch Pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just... <laughs> Yeah, I just remember E3 2018 with Smash Brothers, and we didn't see it, but we knew it was coming. Um, and it was announced for December, so it was yeah, very. True. Um, so I'm just I'm, I'm holding on to that hope. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was March and right before the end of the fiscal year. Um, that seems like a very Nintendo thing to do, actually. Um, <laughs> but you know, I'm really hoping it's like before the end of the year. Oh, That's I gonna... really hope it's before. Go ahead, Jerry. It's going to come out the same day as Elden Ring. Mark my words. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and you know, we talk about what if, what if it's not going to be at E3? Like, there's always that possibility. I feel like they would have told us if it wasn't going to be at point. E3 because they've mm -hmm. they've been they've been very transparent before about games that wouldn't appear at E3, and they know people are expecting the Breath of the Wild yeah. sequel. So I think it's a lock for for E3. Definitely. Yeah. I think we could be looking at a similar timetable, you know, to the to Breath of the Wild before, like where they had a big blowout at E3. Uh, they even had, you know, in-depth demos of the game, um, including a Treehouse Live, where, you know, in this in that case, we were exploring exploring mostly the plateau, and uh, and then the game came out, you know, what nine months later, right? And I think yeah, we're looking at a similar thing here, especially with the more I think about, like we have Skyward Sword HD already coming out this year. I don't know if it makes sense to be launching two 3D Zeldas within the same year, even if one is an update of a previous one. Um, but, you know, as Nintendo, they're the ones who released a Mario and Zelda game on the same day, so you can never truly fully know. <laughs> Andre, they might have come out with three <laughs> Zelda games this yeah. year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Could you imagine? Um, real quick, do you have any? does anyone have any, any thoughts on what they're doing with Breath of the Wild 2? Like, any specific expectations of what we're going to see for it. <laughs> I have a video I coming up, if not already out, that Joey's helping me edit uh, that will explore some ideas. But yeah, Joey, do you have any thoughts on what they could be doing with this game? I literally have no <laughs> clue what they're going to be doing in this game. Like, obviously it's going to have Breath of the Wild's gameplay style. That's for sure. I don't know what they're planning to do with the map. I don't know if it's even going to take place on the same map. Uh, Story-wise, there's hints there. Like, Ganondorf's coming back. But I'm just like... No idea. And I'm not, and I'm, you know, I wasn't even that, I'm not even super excited because I don't know what to expect yet. And I just want to see, and then I'll get excited. There's caves. Get excited for caves, Joey. Yep. Caves. <laughs> I, I actually think, and I remember, because, uh, you know, way, way before I was part of Game Explain, back when this trailer actually happened uh, for the game, like originally two years ago now, and people were really analyzing and looking heavily into it, I remember. And now that I now that I now own the uh, creating a champion book, I looked through it again. It's reminded me um, a lot of the concepts for Breath of the Wild changed so much over the years. And one of the big ones was giant floating islands, including like like Death Mountain floating. And combine that with the fact that the trailer ends with Hyrule Castle and other places rising up, and Skyward Swords coming this year with a Loftwing amiibo. I actually think that we might have some sort of like sky mechanic again, some sort of, you know, uh, floating islands and needing to navigate between them. Does that sound familiar at all, Joey? Does that ring any bells? <laughs> like to a, to a script so, that you might have written? Yeah, so, to so a script, I, <laughs> to a video I'm making almost at, in this moment. <laughs> yeah. Good to know I'm not alone on that. Then. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that'd be cool. I, I think one of the things I was really excited for with Skyward Sword is the idea of being able to fly around like this big open you know, world. And in hindsight, or even, not even in hindsight, during the time, like, it was cool flying, but, like, there wasn't a whole lot you could do. It was basically a really elaborate hub. So it would be awesome to have, like, a game that, you know, to have Breath of the Wild 2 go even more in on a flying angle, even beyond what Breath of the Wild already did, you know, now with you being able to, like, actively explore things in the sky. Um, and that could really, like, tr you know, transform how you feel about that world if you're able to explore above and below. Uh, and mm -hmm. below that, and uh, being underground, possibly. So... <laughs> Stealth, what are you thinking? Nuts. <laughs> right? I mean, really, all we know is Link is in it, um, Zelda's in it, um, and, you know, all that we've seen from the trailer, but 
my 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 big hope is you know a re the return of traditional temples um you know the way i kind of judge a zelda how good a zelda game is is how good their temples are um that's just me um and you know i just want one seven floor behemoth of a temple <laughs> um you know that takes me three hours to get through um you know that's really all i want I want, I want, I want to take that idea. I want a temple that spans underground surface and up to the sky. Just one temple oh goes gosh. all the way. Wow, <laughs> I would take that. Um, maybe we've got a game here at the cave system that will be unlocking throughout the game, expanding more pieces as you go. And my hope though is that Zelda is actually playable in this one, and there's some sort of partner like system that happens. Mm -hmm. It takes two, definitely. Yeah, so it takes two. So, so what all of you are saying is what you actually want is a combination of Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of uh, those too. Yeah, I actually was thinking Spirit Tracks of the tower, at least. So, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and I guess we can get into our uh, general predictions here. And then, you know, if anyone brings up something you want to discuss, you know, feel free to hop in. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll be beginning with our more grounded, our more realistic predictions, and then things will just go off the rails, as, I'm sure, as we go into this. <laughs> um, who wants to start things off here? Does anyone have a have a prediction they want to leap into? Sure, right, I can do one, because because I know, Andre, you'll probably have stuff to say on this one. <laughs> um, I think we'll get a small focus on Mario Golf Super Rush, but not for the main game, but for the like post-updates that we'll start getting for them. Because that's what happened to Mario Tennis Aces. At E3, back when, yeah, I would think it was it was at E3 or like just before release, we saw like the first trailer of oh we're gonna be doing monthly updates for the game. Here's what next month's update for the game is. So you better make sure you get it so you're ready for this kind of thing. And I think I think we'll see the same kind of thing at Mario Golf because at this point, the only thing they haven't really shown off is Battle Golf. And while we could totally get a trailer showing Battle Golf, they could also showcase look we're, we're look we're, we're doing it again. We're doing a year of content updates. Here's the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't have much to say. I mean, uh, it's it. it you sure? Yeah. I mean, I kind of hope they don't waste too much time on golf, just because we it's a known yeah. entity at this point. Um, and I and it does come out shortly thereafter, though. So I'm sure it'll get. If it does, if it's not in the direct, it'll be in the treehouse live. I'm sure. But I don't know. I honestly don't know how much there is left to talk about beyond yeah. I guess just content updates. So and more battle and, golf. and battle golf. Yeah. yeah. But we've already seen you know some of that. So a little bit. All right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Battle golf during treehouse would make sense. Yeah, that would. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that would. Multiplayer head tech stuff, yeah. Exactly. Stealth, what's your uh, first prediction for us? So I know you're doing a video about it, and I'll speak, you know, more broadly. Um, I think that we are getting, we are going to see the last two Smash characters. Two. Um, the first one will be the very first thing we see in this direct that will kick things off. Yep. Um, that will release maybe a week or two after E3 with the Sakurai Presents happening in between. The second character will be announced somewhere toward the end of the Direct for this fall. Um, you know, during E3, that's the time when we see multiple Smash characters. Yep. Um, two E3s ago, we saw Hero and Banjo. Um, I, can't, I don't remember what year it was, but we saw Ryu, Lucas, and Roy all in the same E3. Um, so I think, you know, we're, we're going to see the last two with one coming out, you know, pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you there. That's my prediction. Also, my safest, like, guaranteed <laughs> yeah. that's going to happen prediction. Uh, yeah, and I think, I'm not going to say who the characters are, but I know or who I predict the characters will be. The first <laughs> character is going to be one that's, frankly, not as exciting. The second one's going to be, <laughs> like, Banjo-Kazooie levels of exciting. So that's all I that's all I'm thinking. It's the formula that worked for them in 2019. I think it did. They're gonna want a repeat of that formula this year. Yep. Yeah, I feel the same. I mean, I feel like it's time. It's time for the final two. Like rather than one and then another one later, I feel like this is it. It just it just feels right. I think it's gonna happen. I will be the. Uh, I'm getting so excited over here. I'm just dropping my switch everywhere. <laughs> um, I, I I predict there will. I'll be. I'll go against the grain. I'm predicting there will just be one. Uh, one Smash character. I do think it will open the show, though. I think that's just an easy way to build hype. Like, that's just an easy... No matter... It doesn't matter who you show off. It doesn't matter. People are going to be hyped. Especially, like, you know, they're going to be speculating, is this Smash? Is this a new game? Depending on who it is. So, yeah. I think we'll get one character. Uh, I think it will open the show. But I'd be happy to get two at the same time. So... Will it... Well, the question, though, is will it open with the Smash logo or will it be, like, the, the Pyra and Mytho trailer and not 
open with the Smash logo. So where we oh. thinking, oh, what is this? Is this a new expansion? Oh, one hundred percent mystery. I think. I yeah. mean, either. I mean, I, I think that they're almost always that way to an extent. Like Pyramithra definitely leaned into that hard. Like they they did it better than almost any other trailer. But it just went forever. It's like holy crap, what's going on here? But like it, every up to a point, every trailer is like almost every trailer is like, is this a Smash yeah. character? Or, I think. And, and, and even the maybe, last. Actually, maybe not. Maybe I'm no, I think, Yeah, no, I'm you're right. Sure. It's more like it's more who it is than than if it, it's Smash. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure most of the trailers when they started. We no, you're right. Smash. Yep. Yeah, that, Pyron Mithra was like a rare exception. That's a good point. Sorry, it's Stealth. Were you going to say something? Yeah, I think it's going to be a mystery because even the last Nintendo Direct, they specifically advertised it as, oh, you'll see the next Smash character. Um, Sakurai hasn't retweeted the Nintendo Direct or talked about it at all. Um... I think they're going, you know, to the mystery thing rather right. than okay, everyone knows it's 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 coming, but we we all know it's coming. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I'm gonna say one character and yeah, the mystery, keep you on the toes. But in that regard, I don't think I'll be first. I think it's gonna be just like tucked away in a lull in the middle of the direct. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, well, we're I'm, gonna have I'm... a separate video about this. Too. <laughs> so we'll yeah, talk way I... more about Smash later. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say I'm I'm, I'm with the I, I'm right there with you, Tom. I think personally, I think there'll be one. And it might be one of the last announcements in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Chris, let's hear <laughs> one of your predictions. Yeah, I will just jump into uh, something we don't know about. So this is just a, a surprise game prediction. But I think it's fairly safe, I think. All right. Uh, and that is that after the success and buzz of Miitopia, I think it's safe to say that the Mii's are officially back. Granted, they were never gone. Um, but I think with Miitopia, Nintendo really kind of embrace the bygone era of Miis, and I don't think that it is stopping, which is why I predict Tomodachi Life for the Nintendo Switch uh, is going to happen. It's going to be announced. Now, is it like E3 levels of excitement? Probably not for most people, but <laughs> it's me. whether it's a Direct or an E3 Direct, I think there's always going to be levels of, of variance, you know, depending on the scope and the excitement of certain announcements, and I could definitely see uh, Tomodachi Life Switch being announced in between Zelda and Metroid or whatever it is. I think it would work. And I think it'd just be a lot of fun. It wouldn't exactly be the same as on 3DS. I think there'd be more social elements. They'd lean into what I think worked best about Miitopia, which is the customization, social elements. I think it could make for a really fun game on Switch. At, at that point, I think th I think that would lead more into a sequel to Tamodachi Life rather than a, a, a sure. uh, enhanced port of it. And I mm. think specifically because you mentioned like what they could take from Miitopia, and that had me thinking on the different features and everything that happened with me with Metopia. That still only came out a few weeks ago. I almost feel like it's too early to call that. Yeah. So I feel like, but I feel like that could be an answer we would get if we got like a direct in September or something. Now that they knew how successful it was, they can show. Look, we started development enough to make a trailer at least. <laughs> like, exactly. Um, I don't know if that would be something that would come at E3. I think the original Tamanachi Life had its own like focused direct like a month before E3, so I don't know if we would see that here, but I, I loved Tomodachi Life, and I really liked Miitopia, so I would be happy to see something like that. Yeah, it makes sense for there to be, uh, I think that could, that sounds like one of the smaller announcements Nintendo will like mm -hmm. put in there to, you know, kind of like fill the gaps between the big ones. All right, uh, Tom, what's your prediction? Um, I'm predicting we finally see a new Wario title. Uh, maybe that's part of the reason why Wario was an in-game builder garage. I mean, they don't want Wario oversaturation, <laughs> if that's a thing. I think it's time again for uh, Wario Wars. <laughs> Wario <laughs> saturation Wario, sounds like a gross Wario smash saturation. move. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what's, what, Tom? <laughs> yeah, but I think um, it's going to be time for a new Wario Wear, even if it's collection, just to come out on Switch. I, I think it's been it's overdue at this point. I have that prediction on as well that we'll see a WarioWare actually. Um, there was there was that Nintendo survey going out, I think like last week. That's right. That a bunch of random yeah. people got, and it was like, oh, it, would you buy a new WarioWare for the Switch if it was like this price? And it was like range between forty and sixty for different people. There, there were all the other things on there like brain aids, but people had different ones. But the main one people were pointing out was WarioWare, and I'm sure that was just gauging interest, but it put WarioWare back in my mind. I, I, it, it's time. You're right. It's absolutely time. I would love a new Wario game. I, it's been a long time. I don't think we've... Have we had... I don't think we had one since Game & Wario, have we? Uh, there was like WarioWare Gold. Gold on the 3DS. That's right. A yeah, a compilation, but... yeah. 
That was good. Yeah. Can you imagine the Joy Cons in a WarioWare game? The HD level. <laughs> They'd use it for so many wrong things. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, the Wario, like, the Wario it, Waft. Like, it, it, it would yes. be the um, the the Switch presentation trailer all over again, where they had the whole segment dedicated to like Senra and Kagura or something like that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that thing! Yes, exactly it's so great. Yes, they're gonna introduce a new smell technology too to go to coincide oh, no. with it. <laughs> oh. All right, Joey, what do you got for us? I think it's Ben time, and I'm surprised this game has not been announced yet. Um, but I really think, um, and we. we probably would see it sooner than the Nintendo Direct because it would be developed by Ubisoft. And that game is Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle 2 yep. or something like it. I think I would personally, I would much rather have Nintendo and Ubisoft collaborate with a different franchise. I think that would be much more interesting to me. But given the success mm -hmm. of Mario Rabbids, I do think that for the past four years, yeah, the game's like almost four years old now. It's crazy, right? Uh, so I think they're going to be announcing that and maybe release this year. So I think that would be a, it would be a, it would be a very welcome surprise. I think. What was that whole thing that happened months back? Social where, like, media yep. thing. Yeah, 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 the social Twitter media thing. Right. And I completely forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, that's, so I, I, I have that on my list too, Joey. But I think it, it is possible it'll be at the Ubisoft presentation. What on the twelfth? Not yeah. during the direct. But that could be the either way. The Saturday. Very likely. So we gotta get the discussion up soon, so we're not beaten uh, to to that. Yeah, I th I I think that it is happening. Um, it's absolutely being made, and I think it probably will be at this year's E3, probably at as Tom was saying, the Ubisoft conference, only because that's where they announced the first one, and I think Ubisoft probably would be publishing it again. Um, yep. So yeah, I hope you're right, Joey. I want to see more of that series. So <laughs> do we all think it would be Mario and Rabbids as opposed to? Anything else in Rabbids? Zelda and Rabbids? I mean, that would be wild, but... Zelda, Zelda and Rabbids would be great, <laughs> pun, right? Chris? <laughs> Breath of the Wild, Rabbids? Oh my gosh. Was it? Wait. I, I think... I missed I think that, it too. Would... I missed something that just happened. You said wild, Breath of the Wild. It's Yes, it's... it was! <laughs> yes. Um, I think it would specifically be Mario, if not only because of the social media link, or leak, rather, or whatever mishap that was, but I think it doesn't have to exclusively stay Mario. It could just be Mario and Rabbids, or Mario plus Rabbids, and then, I don't know, maybe Mario and the Rabbids get sucked in some, into some other Nintendo world. But that's a that's good a idea. Super Nintendo That'd world. Cool. But, a Super Nintendo yeah. world, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Falcon joining the crew. He's the only oh, one. Finally. <laughs> but, cause as I think, they would keep, instead of now the Rabbids, now, now it's Zelda plus Rabbids, or Pikmin plus Rabbids, I think it would still be Mario plus Rabbids, but instead of Kingdom Battle, the subtitle would be whatever related to whatever world are crossing into next. I think I think the Rabbids oh. is the only way we're gonna get a new Earthbound game. <laughs> Earthbound and Rabbids. <laughs> Can you imagine? I think I think actually it's a really good prediction. I I think it will be Mario and Rabbids, but I think there will be a new character, at least a new character, whether it's a Mario character like in you know, Rosalina or some other kind of Nintendo spinoff. Like it does, I mean, it does kind of make sense. They're already crossing dimensions with, or you know, with uh, realms, whatever you, whatever the rabbits hail from. You know, why not bring in more Nintendo IP? They could almost make it like a Smash Brothers RPG light, right? Um, so I think that'd be that'd be a fun way to to get more interest in it. So yeah, I want to see uh, more of that. All right. Well, speaking of things I want to see more of, I am predicting that we will in fact see a new Donkey Kong game at this year's E3. There have been rumors. Uh, that is being made. It, they actually do largely line up with uh, things I've been hearing before as well. Um, and I, it makes me, it leads me to believe that there is a new DK uh, being developed. The rumor is that it's being done by the Odyssey Mario Galaxy team. Uh, wh what are they now? EAD Tokyo? Is that? E uh, e EPD? EPD Tokyo. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Um, or yeah, it, is it still in Tokyo? I don't remember. Um, but yeah, and I, I think that makes sense. And I think that will be the this year's big holiday title. As I said, I think Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be next year. So that means they need something big for this year. And I think Donkey Kong is just the one. Now, I know that some of the rumors have been, have been saying it will be a 2D game. No. I think it's going to be a 3D game. I think it's going to be a 3D Donkey Kong game. They're going to do it right this time. They've got, you know, the the developer of some of the best 3D games ever made now developing it. 
I don't think it makes sense to do 2D. I mean, they were, to be fair, they did make a fun 2D Donkey Kong game before Jungle Beat, but I think they can do better now. <laughs> um, and plus, I don't know how you can top Tropical Freeze. Why would you even try? Exactly. Let's let's do 3D. <laughs> I am predicting 3D Donkey Kong. I want it to be 3D too. I do think the I do think it is going to be 2D though. Um, and that would be very exciting in general because 2D Donkey Kong games, when made well, are yeah, just fantastic. Amazing. But I want you to be right, Andre. <laughs> I want it to be 3D because we haven't had a 3D Donkey Kong game in over 20 years. And 3D games have gotten since, uh, significantly better over the past 20 years. Well, granted, Donkey Kong 64, it's, I like it, but I understand the complaints about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, 3D Donkey Kong game would just be a blast, a, a barrel blast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Now we're going to get barrel blast HD. That's going to oh, be yeah. the what big DK. He summons Joey. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, I'm going to go on that and kind of think of almost like a Bowser's Fury like model where Nintendo kind of added new content to another game. Uh, considering. They're coming off Odyssey and now maybe doing Donkey Kong. I'm predicting they're going to take some of the levels from Odyssey and tailor them to Donkey Kong in order to save development time during the pandemic and get the game out in time for Christmas. Huh. That's oh, my uh, wild kind of prediction. They kind of make like a hybrid game that's brand new and in time for Donkey Kong's anniversary. Donkey so Kong in New Donk City. I was about yes. to say, poor Back Pauline. The old steel and construction, like his original game, kind of like full circle. It's, and to that point, I mean, I actually remember thinking while playing in New Donk City, I'm like, man, this this feels like a comedic Donkey Kong game. It might have been because I was playing as a Diddy costume at the same time. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it definitely felt like, it definitely evoked like uh, the idea of, of how a Donkey Kong game could work 3D, and uh, I would love to see that realized. Like, being able to, like, you know, uh, climb on vines, you know, swing around, and uh, you know, they could do a lot, of, a lot of stuff with like even more uh, mobile mechanics than even Mario has, you know, where you could scamper up walls almost a little like Spider Man or something. <laughs> That'd be so great. Be I just awesome. want any. Any Nintendo, Joey, you said 3D games have gotten better. They have, but they've also, I think, gotten less common, at least from Nintendo. Way less I mean, common. when's the last 3D platformer that wasn't Mario? And so if if any other series got it, but especially Donkey Kong got the 3D platformer treatment, man, that'd be fun. It'd be so fresh and new and exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay, a great point. Good. Yeah, And to answer your question, more. we had Crash Bandicoot 4 last year. Come on, Chris. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, next prediction, Stealth. Do you have, any, do you have another one for us? I do, and kind of to piggyback, to piggyback off what you were saying about the 3D Donkey Kong, um, I think that's going to be 2D, but I do think we might see another um, first-time 3D Nintendo series, um, and that's Kirby. Yes. Um, oh, yes. You know, it's been a long time. It's been since 2018 since uh, Star Allies, um, and how labs keep teasing the next evolution of Kirby. Um, I just think it's time for a 3D Kirby game, whatever that's going to look like. I have no idea. Um, but I think that we are going to see it this year. Is it going to release this year? Maybe. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's something that, you know, people have been kind of clamoring for. Yeah. I've, been, I've yes, wanted a 3D definitely. Kirby ever since they, sh they uh, teased one on the 64 decades ago. Um, and I actually had that on my list. I was also predicting a 3D Kirby. So I'm basically... Yeah, me too. 2020, E3 2010, they had a 2D Donkey Kong and 2D Kirby. I think it's time to do the 3D version of that this year. Yeah. Um, I, are they, I actually... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask, are they going to like do the traditional Kirby? Or is it going to be like a yeah, mass attack or something with something, some brand new mechanic in it, you think? Mm. It I think it's going to be 3D and crazy. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think it's going to be like you know, Mario Odyssey or anything. I, I, I think it's just going to be something that only Kirby can get away with, if that makes sense. Um, you know. It's funny that you say you don't, you don't think it'll be like Mario Odyssey when Mario Odyssey is the closest Mario has been to a Kirby game because how you yeah. absorb powers essentially and it's true. Oh, yeah. move around. So I think I think just being if it is 3D, I think just being a 3D Kirby is enough. I don't think they really need yeah. another gimmick because they just have to make it work in 3D. Now, but I would love a city trial esque mode. Yes, yes. that is the closest. Yes. yes, we'll get to another air ride. Now, stealth. I actually think it will release next year, and this will tie in very nicely with this big theme because next year is Kirby's 30th anniversary. So, doing that next yeah. year for Kirby's big 30, we're putting him in big 3D. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time. It only took three yeah. decades for the numbers to match. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> 
A question. You get one. Mm. 3D Kirby or 3D Donkey Kong? Donkey Kong. Personally, Kirby. Donkey, 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 Donkey Kong. Kong. I'll take Donkey Kong. Donkey if there's Donkey the Kong. choice. <laughs> I'll be Donkey Kong for you too, Chris? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'm the only I'm just, one with Kirby here. <laughs> I'm just imagining the 30 and then, like, the zero turns into a D. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that there you go. Go. <laughs> That'd be really neat. Man. They could still announce it this year, and uh, uh, yeah, I guess it would be a little too, be too early to hype up the 30th announcement, uh, 30th uh, uh, reveal, 30th I guess. Anniversary. Yeah, 30th yeah. anniversary, right? All right, um, let's move on. Joey, what do you have for us? Uh, so, little known franchise that I never ever talk about no. called Metroid. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <What's that>? Um <laughs> so there were the there was the the rumor that there would be a 2D Metroid shown off this year that was made by Mercury Steam. And you know, Mercury Steam they've done things besides Metroid these past 4 years. That like, sounds ominous. <laughs> uh, Mercury Steam the, de <laughs> the developer of Metroid Samus Returns. I should laugh. <laughs> developers of Metroid Samus Returns, yep. Mercury Steam. Um the rumors are that they've already finished. They're already finished with this game. Um, I don't know if they've elaborated if it's uh, over these leakers have elaborated if it is a new 2D Metroid or if it's a remake of Samus Returns or even a remake of Super Metroid. Whatever it is, if it gets announced, I will be a happy camper. And I just, <laughs> I just want it to exist. I don't think, and I think that's the only thing Metroid we will get. And I do think it is going to come out this year if we do get it announced in the direct. But maybe they might show a tease of Prime 4, since it's the fourth anniversary of Prime 4's <laughs> announcement. <laughs> so I may be something with the 2D uh, game announcement. And if I had to pick one, I would want it to be Metroid 5, of course, which is the game which is canonically set after Metroid Fusion. Right. Finally, advancing the timeline. <laughs> exactly. It's been so now, quick, now, quick question. Um, as a big Metroid fan that I know you are, if they didn't show any Metroid games, but there was a there there was a Samus costume in Fortnite or one of those games, would you be happy with that? I actually would be. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like that would actually really excite me. But I think the the hopes of that have been dashed with the with the latest reporting that the Nintendo just didn't agree to put her in the game, which I guess makes sense that they would do that. So. I'm not. I'm not hoping for that, but I would love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is Metroid's 30, 35th anniversary as well this year, which Nintendo it has is. not acknowledged yet. So that would have been a fun yeah. way to uh, to do something for it. Anything, really, <laughs> Any, for the love of God. <laughs> yep. Could you see them actually remaking Super Metroid though, which is like already so good? <laughs> like it'd be so. It only you could almost yeah. only disappoint people if you did that. <laughs> I really don't want. That. I'd I'd sooner take a pol an HD port of Sam's Returns than a remake of Super Metroid. Like, like there are some things about Super Metroid that haven't aged particularly. The wall well. jump. The control yeah, the wall <laughs> jump exactly. So just in general, the controls are kind of wonky in that game. But yeah, it's it doesn't need a full blown remake. Like, if anything, just tighten up the controls a little bit and like make it still 16 bit. <laughs> but yeah, I don't I don't want to, I want something new or even Sam's Returns would make me happy because it was a great game that many people slept on when it came out on the 3DS. Yeah, I, I used to be a purist with like the SNES Nintendo games, like don't touch them. Um, but then they made, uh, you know, Link Between Worlds, um, you know, on, on the 3DS. And that was so good. Yeah. So, you know, if they could do something equally as good with Super Metroid, I'd be OK. I'd be OK with it. But, you know, it'd have to be so good. Yeah that's, yeah, that's a good point, though. I'd, I'd love, personally, a uh, remake of Fusion and then just pushing the story a bit past, a bit further past it there, like a little, you know, 20, just 30 percent more. Give, yeah, give us give us 20 seconds more of what happened, please. <laughs> now, yeah, like uh, Half-Life. Uh, oh, spoilers, <laughs> oh, no. Spoilers now, I have, I have a metric question for you, Joey. Since it wasn't <laughs> mentioned, where, where do you stand on uh, the chances of getting the Metro Prime trilogy? Uh, it's because not that's, been, that's been rumored for like three years now. Yeah, but it's uh, but I think uh, after hearing the leaks, that's going to be that's probably going to come next year or something. I think the 2D Metroid is going to be it this year. Okay. I would love to be wrong because I would much prefer the Prime trilogy over even a new 2D Metroid because people need to play that stinking trilogy. Put it on Switch. <laughs> it's going to sell millions just being on the Switch alone. So yeah, do it. I've been wanting to revisit Metro Prime 3 specifically. I've been mean, holding off because I feel like I, I, I know the moment I pick it up and they'll announce a trilogy. I'm like, darn, I just beat the game. I don't want to play well, it again. <laughs> you, 
You know what you have to do now, Andre? You have to pick it up then. I guess so. Me. I know. Do, do, do the humanity a favor. Yeah. <laughs> what are we thinking for... Uh, what are we thinking we'll see a Metroid Prime 4? What's the uh, the gut reaction or gut your gut feelings on uh, how much we see and what, when it's coming out? We're not going to see too much. Uh, if there is gameplay, we're not going to see too much of it. I would, I would straight up love a CGI trailer. Like, give us a peek of what that new suit's gonna look like, if it's gonna change at all. Give mm -hmm. us an idea of what the story's gonna be like. Like, I know a lot of people hate CGI trailers for games, and I totally understand that. But given the fact that we've only had a logo for this game for four years, <laughs> like, just, just give me something that's that has substance to it. Like, like you know, we've we've sat on that Elden Ring trailer for two years, and we just <laughs> got gameplay for it today. So like. So yeah, even if I have to wait another two years for Prime 4, like that, like give me like a two minute CGI trailer and I'll just keep watching that every day for two years. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, uh, I I don't want see I don't want, I don't want to the CG trailer though. I think they I think they got, they got to show a little bit more than just CG. I think we have to see how the game plays. Um, it's been at, in development for like two and a half years. It so. has. Yeah, so I think I think I, I think it will be at the Zero Z Three. Uh, I mm -hmm. I think we will see a trailer for it. It'll probably have like some cutscenes in there. I'm sure. I, I think they'll show some gameplay, but I think there won't be a demo of it. Like we're gonna get the trailer. That's gonna be it, and then we might possibly get a 2022 uh, release date. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that would be that would yeah. make me a happy camper. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is a chance though Metroid Prime 4 is like linked to the Switch DX as I put it, but uh, and the, you won't see it until then just to make that announcement like huge later on. That's true. That's true. Highly possible. Yep. They could just sit it out I, again. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. I just want a something Metroid that's that's not like a skin in Rocket League or something. <laughs> yeah. So. The thing is, like, we we know that they are going to show some 2022 titles. Like, especially what the way they worded it was so weird. I know you said, Joey, they say similar things every year. But I look back at this one, and they're like, they said, oh, I actually just forgot the wording. It was um, mostly, what was it here? Let's see if I can find it. Oh, I can't find I wanna it. Say it was, I want to say it was that. It was like, mostly. It was mostly. I don't think they used that exact word before. So I think they are going to have some big 22 annou 2022 announcements. And of course, you know, one of those could be uh, could be a better look at Splatoon three. But yeah, I'm not I'm not feeling that. I don't think we'll see Splatoon three. I think I think I, I think, think Breath so. of the Wild two and Metro Prime four will probably be the big 2022 things showing off so far. Um, even if they're both games we know about. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we're gonna see any 2020 game, 2022 games that we don't know about. That's uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I just had this weird revelation the other day. I was thinking like, oh wow, Splatoon 3 is already coming out. What's it been, like a year since Splatoon 2? It feels no, the game's gonna, three years when old. When the game, when 3 when three comes out, the game's gonna be five years old. Yeah. God. Yeah, that's wild. That, that's actually why I think we will see Splatoon 3. Even if it's just, even if it's just a new trailer, I think we'll get some sort of trailer that teases what the story is and shows us what the new, um, the new pop stars are. And Maybe it won't even be at the treehouse. It's just th there. You go. That's it. Um, and then you know, maybe a time frame for when in 2022 it'll come, like the summer or something like that. That's a summer um, game right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it, it was like it was like May for the first game and like July for the second game. So I can see around that time next year and then then it'll get a big blow at that that e3 yeah that's why i think it's still i think it might be still a little bit too early to show it again like it wasn't all that long ago when they revealed it and i think if we're if it were going to be at e3 they would have just held the entire announcement until then um that's true actually so i feel like we yeah. probably won't see it again until until fall direct at the soonest okay also there's a also, there's, there's a chance, just purely speculation. There's also a chance, you know, when with COVID and how things changed, this that was originally an announcement for E3, but then they moved it up to the direct that happened in February, just to kind of fill that in more. Could be. That could happen. You never know. All right. Uh, Stealth, do you have another uh, prediction for us? I do. Um, so speaking of games that we haven't seen in a very long time, um, I think it's finally time we see a full trailer for Bayonetta 3. Um, you yeah, know, announced announced during the 2017 <laughs> Game Awards. Um, you know, we haven't seen it since. Every time Platinum's asked about it, they say development's going smooth. Um, there's no need to worry. Um, but I think if we don't see it this year, there's, there could be some reason to worry. Um, 
But yeah, I think we're going to get not only a trailer, but I'm also predicting it's going to release in you know October. Mm -hmm. Seems like a good time for it. That's around when Bayonetta 2 launched, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's. I think it's so strange that it's taken them this long to even say mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. I joked, like, what if this game comes out, like, after Prime 4 or something? And, like, if we don't see it at E3 this year, I'm going to be like, this game's coming out the same day or something. This is <laughs> this is wild. It, it feels so weird, too, with how how hard they pushed Bayonetta at first. I mean, with the announcement of 3 was they had also announced 1 and 2 coming to Switch, and they came out, like, two months later. And now it's been so many years. People, the, at this point, people have either forgotten that we're getting another Bayonetta or have been checking that account that's, been ticking down every single day. It has been over a thousand days since you Jeez. last heard about it, for example. Yep. So mm -hmm. it's like the two different timelines. We have the one timeline where <laughs> they're like, don't ask us about being anymore. <laughs> like in a in a phrase that's like, you'll know there'll be an announcement later. Or the other timeline where it's like, we're not on good relations with Nintendo anymore. Uh, stop bugging us about it. <laughs> I hope it's that first one. Yeah. And we do find out yep. about it, and they're just holding off for new hardware, potentially, or something like that at this point. Or they've just been divided on so many projects that, you know, Bayonetta 3 has maybe gone through different revisions, like a game like Resident Evil 4 did in, in the past, and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the platinum way is to work on too many projects and not release anything. Um, <laughs> you know, because they're, they're working on Babylon Fall for Square Enix. Yeah. Um, they're working on their new like first party IP. The kaiju um, type one, maybe. Yeah, and, and then they also have their like retro arcade line that they're working on. Um, so they have like a bunch of projects they're working on, but it's like, come on, Bayonetta 3 was announced in 2017. Show us something. <laughs> yep. 100% agree. At agreed. this point, at this point, this better be like the best game in the trilogy. <laughs> like best game ever. <laughs> best game ever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Chris, do you have another prediction for us? Yes, I do, and it is a, a whole different thing than yes. what we've been talking about. Actually, it does oh. harken back to Splatoon 3. Okay. In a way, I'll get to that. <laughs> Mario Kart. So, I will admit... Yes. Um, I will admit, Mario Kart 9 sounds funny. It is weird to say Mario Kart 9. <laughs> Mostly just because, like, Mario Kart 8 has been Mario Kart for what seven years almost now. a decade yeah. yeah most of your Very life long time most of my life okay not most of my life a lot of my life and um the i i you know i didn't think mario kart 9 is ever going to happen because hey the mario kart 8 is doing so well but then it all kind of changed in february when i saw the direct uh because honestly personally one of the last things i expected to see announced uh or to see was the logo splatoon 3. i just never would have thought that would happen but as soon as i saw it it kind of hit me. I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Like, it's time. Why not? And I feel like if Mario Kart 9 was announced at E3, I feel like a lot of people would react similarly, where maybe people right now, you know, for some, it still feels too soon, or it's just like Mario Kart 8 is just, it's so great. But I think that if they announced it, everyone would kind of collectively go, you know what? Yeah, it is time. Um, so I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if Mario Kart 9 was there. It still feels very, like it like it probably won't happen, but it could. <laughs> That's love my it. top hope, actually. Yeah, <laughs> really. I, I've been wanting one for so long. Yeah that, yeah, that was actually one of my predictions. And I think the reason why it's weird for people is because it is like the best selling game on any platform from any publisher this entire generation. So it's like, how yeah. can you stop? But do you think that it's gonna be something like like, Mar like Mario Kart Ultimate with like every character in every course? Or do you think like, which was a trendy thing for a while, do you think they're gonna go mm -hmm. like Smash Kart or Nintendo Kart or go that route? I think w when I think about it, I think a Smash Kart or Nintendo Kart would be awesome. Uh, when I think about realistically what I picture in my head, I think of it as something, I think most similarly to Double Dash uh, because Mario Kart 8 Deluxe like, it's the definitive Mario Kart, and it ha honestly, it has so much content. It's practically the ultimate Mario Kart, because it has, in my opinion, most of the best tracks from the series. I think of something that's maybe a little more stylized and just a different approach to Mario Kart in some way, like Double Dash was with, you know, it's practically the only Mario Kart that is built around, like, a mechanic that is so different, being 
two racers in one cart. Something like that. I don't know what it would be, but I think it would have to introduce something new um, that really changes the game if if it if it existed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. I think Mario Kart 9 probably switched things up, uh, so to speak. Um, I don't... I hope it's at E3. I would love for that to be the case. That also is one of my top hopes. Like, give us a new Mario Kart. I love Mario... You know, I really enjoy Mario Kart 8, but I've had enough of it across two platforms, a thousand hours, and all that. Um, with that said, I'm not predicting it here. I don't think... I don't think it'll be here for as, as much I would love to be wrong, but I am making a Mario Kart prediction. Which is, after Super Mario Party randomly getting that online update out of the blue, years after it came out, I think it opens the doors. I think we're, yeah. we're finally going to get Mario Kart 8 DLC on uh, on the Switch, and I think it's going to come in the form of a brand new mode, possibly like a Double Dash mode, that, that gives us a new way to uh, re-experience the game. Not unlike what they did in the original Mario Kart 8, where they had a 200cc update after the fact, but I think this is something. This is going to be something more dramatic. I think it makes sense for Nintendo to try and monetize even more of the current base, which is gigantic, almost as big as the Switch's base itself, and, uh, you know, and uh, get them, you know, buying some DLC for it. But again, I'd be happy if we get Mario Kart 9 too. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Where My, my, my big hope really is for a new Mario Kart, but... I feel like everything lately has been leaning towards, despite it feeling, at least to me, like it's too late to do DLC for, for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it sold so well they know people would buy it. Mm -hmm. And with the way, I mean, they did random updates for that game. They did like three Labo updates for that game. They did the Breath of the Wild Link costume. There's like a random DLC update. And it wasn't even, it wasn't like, it was free DLC, like like the like the Mercedes-Benz on the original one. Like, it was a free DLC update. Oh, that was marketing, but, yeah. <laughs> that was well, an yeah, ad. Like, it was marketing. <laughs> like, there, there, there's multiple things that are pointing, like you mentioned, with Super Mario Party suddenly getting marketing again and getting that online update. Just, there's stuff showing they're not afraid to look back on this stuff. And Mario Party Deluxe got a random, like, bug fix update in, like, April. When the previous update, like, the, the issues that they fixed had been plaguing the game for two years. And they were small things. <laughs> but for some reason, they went back and touched those. And since then, people have also found, they don't know if these are new or if they only just recently found them. There's files, data mined in Mario Kart Tour, that make connection to Mario Kart 8, including, like, getting, like, your player rank and data through Nintendo account. And it's really making me think that they've actually been all this time setting up for um, doing some sort of additional content to 8, to 8 Deluxe specifically. And it makes me wonder if it'll actually, at least in some part, tie into Mario Kart Tour. Um, a lot of the assets of Mario Kart Tour, or Mario Kart Tour has the same development team, as, or at least partially the same development team as 8 Deluxe did. And a lot of like the... A lot of like the character models and sound effects and animations, all of those that were in 8, were immediately just brought over for tour. Mm -hmm. So, and there's a lot of similarities there. That makes me wonder if a lot of these things for tour have actually been made to also work for eight. That would be an easy update. Just take all the yeah. tour levels that they've already <laughs> yes. HD'd, add them to eight. They have to do a little bit more to them, I think. But uh, yeah. yeah, a little bit more. But that's there you go. Kind of like the Pokemon models, isn't it? Like they have Pokemon 3D models and they can go to every game. So, <laughs> uh, Chris, when you were just talking about like, it won't have like Mario Kart 9 would be weird. I thought you're gonna go like they're gonna <coughs> go the Windows route and just have Mario Kart 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mario Kart Tour is nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, that's true. That's part of why it's so weird because there's nine is such a weird number, but eight <laughs> is like perfect. I had a more uh, yeah, tempered uh, prediction for Mario Kart, so I don't think we'll see it. I think it's gonna be tied to Switch, the next Switch hardware. We'll get mm -hmm. a graphics update along with a reason to give more money to Nintendo in terms of eight or 16 new tracks that can only run on the new hardware that are like tailored specifically oh, wow. for it. Mm -hmm. That's my prediction for Mario Kart. That's a good idea. Do that Grand Theft Auto, <laughs> buy it forever type model. Get some, uh, get some uh, ray tracing in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God, Mario Kart 8 already looks amazing. Uh, if, you, if they made it look even better, my God. Um, all right, Tom. Actually, while we're on your, <laughs> sorry, as you're raising your mug. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> your computer just catches fire. <laughs> Do you have another prediction for us, uh, separate from Mario Kart? Mm, okay, I, I want, I don't. This is like, 
logical, but something that tells me it's almost been too long at this point. I want the Ring Fit DLC, some new way to use the Ring <laughs> Con, um, either in an additional adventure or my more wacky solution to have a third Zelda this year and make it like a crossbow training port by yes. using the Ring Con. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be amazing. That's what I'd like to see. I, I My foot is almost healed from injuring it playing a you know, Ring Fit adventure, so it's time for DLC. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I respect that. Um, yeah, well, speaking of ports, actually, I'll give a, when it, when in my more, when, it, when my predictions completely realistic and, uh, <laughs> because pretty much every Wii U game, almost every Wii U game up to this point has been ported to the Switch with only a handful of, of exceptions, one of which was Star Fox Zero. And I predict it's coming back as Star Fox Zero Grippy Edition, where you can now play as Grippy Toad <laughs> from, oh, wow. from Star Fox, uh, uh, what was it? Shield guard, <laughs> Star Fox shield, whatever guard it was. Guard. Yeah, Star Fox guard. That shit. Um, no, seriously, seriously, I think we will get. I think we very well could get an HD update of that game without, you know, retrofitted to work with the uh, more conventional controls rather than the gamepad. Now I have a question for you. Then, if it's because Star Fox Zero was partially developed by Platinum. Yeah, that's why being yeah, three. That's why it's taking forever. <laughs> no, well, yeah, that's, that's what I'm wondering. Are we getting that instead of Bayonetta three? Uh -oh. It's combo pack. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yep. This is the only way to get people to get Star Fox Zero again. But... <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. A lot of people say the only problem with Star Fox Zero was the controls, and I completely disagree. Like, I played that game recently, um, and the levels are just boring. There's barely any of them, and there's, like, barely any, like, fighters in them. I felt like it was just... There's just a severe lack of content in that game. So if they're going to release a Switch port for it, they need to give me more than just what was in the base game of yeah. Star Fox Zero. I, I, if it actually ends up happening, I think it actually would be a, a a more than just a remaster. It would it would have additional content, new levels. They would retro. They would they would rework the existing ones. Um, and they they'd have to anyway because the controls are built around the gamepad. You'd have to change the designs a bit in order to work with more conventional controls. Um, and I think they could. I think they could use it as a base. They, you know, maybe it would launch as a new game. I don't know. I, 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 I have a feeling that we haven't seen the last of Star Fox, and I'm hoping that this year's E3 is going to be the time when we, uh, when we see it. So, okay. All right. <laughs> well, how are we doing on predictions? Does anyone have one they have they haven't uh, given provided yet? I think I have a wild one that okay. I kind of just thought of, but oh my. I imagined this. But I did imagine this scenario for years where. Where, and I, I'm not even a huge fan of this franchise, like, at all. But I have so much, so much sympathy for this fan base that I feel like it's time for them to, you know, get something from from Nintendo. Thank you, Star Wars and, FX2. I've been saying this for years. Andre, you're fired. Um, <laughs> can, can you do that? <laughs> I have an Uno card. Uh, but I'm thinking, like... An announcement that would be just earth-shattering um, is a new F-Zero game. And I know this to that's why I don't see it happening at all this year is because Nintendo made comments earlier this year saying, hey, it's hard to make a new F-Zero game. We need some really cool ideas. By the way, here's the 14,000th Kirby game. That's exactly <laughs> the same. Uh, but, but yeah, I would just love to see an F-Zero announcement just because I'd be like, yes, you guys got what you wanted. Your suffering has mm -hmm. ended. <laughs> yeah. Way, Finally, think. a new Captain Falcon vendor for us to use. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think, you know what, I will say whether or not we get Mario Kart news or not, I'm feeling that we are, I feel like we're overdue for like some kind of racing announcement from Nintendo. Like, Mario Kart isn't, like, Nintendo used to make several kinds of racing games, and now all we have is a nearly decade-old Mario Kart. I think it's, I think it is time for something new. So if that ends up being a zero at this year's E3, at this year's E3 hey, sign me up. That'd be amazing. And I don't get what Nintendo's saying with, we need a new idea. No, you don't. Just freaking put it, make it online. Yeah, double them out, people, 60 people, and there you go. That's your new F-Zero game. That's all you need. Sure. <laughs> all you need. Yeah. It drives me nuts sometimes that Nintendo has that mindset <laughs> about certain IPs, but not others. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. I don't get it. <laughs> All right, another prediction. Does anyone else have anything left, or? Um, I think we might get a nice look at Pokemon Legends Arceus. Ooh, that's right. Like, I, yeah. I, I feel like we, we might just get like a right-in trailer for the Diamond and Pearl one, but for Pokemon Legends, I think we might get something that shows us a little more what's going on here. Maybe actually has 
uh, m less ambient music this time. It gives us a look at maybe maybe the story, for example, um, because that uh, they, they dated that like a week or two ago. Yeah, uh, pretty for, soon. Like I think I think January. So we it it feels to me like since that wasn't dated in a Pokemon presents or some sort of Pokemon presentation, maybe that means during the Nintendo Direct we'll actually see a new trailer for it. Just um, that isn't focused on the release date, but is just something new from it. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be down for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, do, do you think they would hold it off until, like, don't they normally have a Pokemon Presents shortly after E3? Would that not be the better they, venue for it? I think it's normally before E3. Is it and before? The oh, okay, I, then. I, right. I, I think <laughs> around the time that they actually d just kind of dropped the release dates is when that would normally be. I could be wrong, but I think the fact that they didn't just save that for a proper Pokemon presentation to me, it means we may not be getting one. Mm. So wasn't wasn't there a, like a rumor or leak a while back from a reliable leaker that there was going to be a Pokemon Presents before E3, and then everyone was like, "Well, of course, there's always a Pokemon <laughs> Presents before E3." Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> and where'd that go? That and the Switch Pro. <laughs> Seriously. Yep. And Nintendo probably just made those plans and just decided to shake them up just to make the leakers <laughs> mad or something. <laughs> Maybe. All right, who's next? Do we have anything else? Uh, any other predictions we or hopes that we haven't gotten out there yet? Yeah, I have one more prediction. Right. I feel like I have to talk about a JRPG here. Nice. Um, mm -hmm. Is uh, Fire Emblem. Um, I think it's time we see a remake of some Fire Emblem game. I, honestly, I'm hoping for a collection of uh, Path of Radiance and uh, Radiant Dawn. Um, the uh, GameCube right. and Wii games, which I think are like three four hundred dollars now um, at least the game game is it's ridiculous mm -hmm. um and it's so expensive and i just feel like a collection of those would be very well received just hd them up you don't even need new content you just you just bring them out you know put them maybe make them a reasonable price and people <laughs> will go crazy for that definitely definitely i i do think we'll see something fire emblem i'm not sure if we would see path of radiance and radiant dawn i actually feel like we might see a remake Another Fire Emblem Echoes yeah. remake of uh, one of the early Japan only ones. That yeah, we just don't have yet. enough Fire Emblem games on Switch. It's a big problem. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't um, wasn't what the same leaker who talked about 2D Metroid and Donkey Kong also said something about Fire Emblem? I think they did. The Zippo. I, yeah, I Zippo. Yeah. They also said Maybe. Super Mario Party 2. So who knows? <laughs> that was the one I wanted to talk about after this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, well, I think uh, go for it, I think, unless someone yeah. else has, yeah. Yeah, um, you mentioned the fact that uh, Super Mario Party had the online update recently, and I definitely think while that was definitely something fun to do, maybe time, maybe could have been a little bit earlier with the pandemic at all, I definitely think they chose to do that to test out the things like the online servers and how to handle this before doing it as the centered focus with a brand new release of one. Let's see how people handle updating the existing game that uses a similar framework um, with online, see how it runs, what kind of things we need to address with it. So that way, when a new one, a new one that gets announced this E3 and releases before the end of this year, that's what I'm hoping at least, um, it'll release with the perfect, by Nintendo standards at least, online. Perfect. Cool. Yeah. Cool. yeah. We don't go 14 <laughs> rounds in and have a crash on us. I find that. <laughs> yeah. that that, that was so upsetting. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I still feel like it's too soon. I mean, I think we will absolutely get a sequel. I, I feel like, I mean, is, is, would it be too soon if the online update had to happen? Um, mm -hmm. But because of that, I think that just threw everything off, for me at least. And I don't know why we would get on the update if we would get a new Super Mario Party this soon. But Nintendo's done, you know, weirder things. Um, mm -hmm. So, but yeah, they did announce, and the, they did they had announced Super Mario Party at, the, at NE3. So there was precedent for it. I I, I don't actually, and yeah, they, they announced at the moment Smash, too, which yeah. is kind of funny. Um, I don't actually think it would be a problem for this new one to coexist with the current Super Mario Party, just because the current one, or Super Mario Party, can't really be played on a Switch Lite, not without, like, a ton of extra money poured into extra purchases. So I think whatever sequel would be different enough that they would try to allow, or market both of them, basically. It's not the. It's not to replace Super Mario Party. It's here. Here's an additional Mario Party. Different things. This one, Super Mario Party, 
it does a lot more with the motion controls and the single Joy-Con play. This one maybe would be more like what we had from different handheld Mario Parties, for example. But something that would work well on any version of the Switch. It would have to play rather differently, so. Or at least control-wise. Yeah, just uh, just get rid of that cooking minigame and you're pretty much set. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, do we have anything? Anything? Any other burning predictions we got to get out there? No? Are we tapped? I, 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 I do have a... I do have maybe a third-party prediction, but it's pretty close to Nintendo. Um, That's fine. Go for it. I, I think we're, I think we're gonna get a big, maybe a you know a semi-big segment on uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five. Yep. Um, me too. Just because you know, in, in typical Sega fashion, they they leaked the the release date and a bunch of information <laughs> from them. They, 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 they leaked it themselves. Um, yep. Which is a very Sega thing to do, um, you know. So we we basically know the game is coming out November 11th, I think. Um, so I think it's just, it's just going to be there. Yeah. The amount of info that came from them updating the website <laughs> accidentally in advance is the amount of information you would get from a new trailer. So that yep. tells me, oops, we were preparing the website for E3 and accidentally hit publish, not schedule. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty certain we'll see S and T five here. I think that's a safe bet. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Uh, well, how about here? Here's an unsafe bet, and I'm not making a bet. Ooh. Do we think we'll see Pikmin Four here? I, I was thinking that uh, they're saying no. I'm thinking it's just <laughs> one of those games that could be like a surprise title and fit like a late September, October time frame. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shoot, Pikmin I think it's one of those that's been worked on for a long time, and so it may just in the back burner. Maybe just one of those like, hey guys, we need a game. Bring mm. up Pikmin Four, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's possible Pikmin 3 Deluxe is maybe still a little bit too recent, but I that I mean I want I was gonna say that they were testing the waters. I mean, they, I mean that would then raise the question like have they not been working on Pikmin 4 at all? I mean, which they may very well not be at the, you know at this point. Um, but I feel like the fact that, that they did release it means that they are still looking at Pikmin as a you know viable yeah. franchise. And uh, yeah, I do hope that it's still in development. But I'm not expecting it at this year's E3. Well, well, they, they have to be considering Pitman to some level a viable franchise. And it's getting that mobile game. That That's right. Exactly. That's actually a great point. <laughs> that is actually a great point. So. <laughs> Yeah. I think Pikmin 4 will be announced in a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It's very... You know what? I'm, I'm with you there. That's how Pikmin 3 Deluxe was announced. I'm with you there. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be four different uh, Pikmin sprouts. Yes. Yeah, I like it. Exactly. That. That's it. Yeah, it's just going to be, it's gonna be a, an abstract announcement. I love it. No no title, like no actual logo or anything. Just four Pikmin flowers. That's it. Yeah. So they'll, they'll tweet out the burning Chibi Robo picture. Oh first, my god! Like half an hour oh before. No. We can't. We can't go through that again. <laughs> Not again. All right. Any final thoughts, everyone? Before we wrap it up here, I think we start running out. But any anything else? Any general thoughts or predictions or hopes that you want to get out there before before I shut down? Um. One prediction. Who do we think is going to host this this direct? Is it going to be Doug Bowser and Koizumi? like the last e3 but i forget his name um who's like the general director of software at nintendo who usually does the general ones who do you think it's gonna be it's gonna be them totally it's gonna be, them. It's gonna be aisha <laughs> tyler actually <laughs> <from Yugi. laughs> I, I i think it'll be a mix between uh doug bowser uh koizumi and uh eiji aonuma for anything zelda yep that yeah, seems that like sounds right i agree with that so <laughs> All right, now that we've discussed uh, our hopes and predictions and expectations and uh, our off-the-rails <laughs> thoughts, uh, how are we feeling now? Are we or more excited, less excited? How, just how are we feeling in, feeling in general now that the show is uh, even closer than it was when we started this discussion three hours ago? <laughs> A little more excited. Yeah. I'm, I'm more, I'm surprised... Uh, most of you think Prime 4 is going to be there. So maybe I am a little more excited now. <laughs> it's sweet. It's, uh, yeah, you're absorbing our uh, our hype levels <laughs> for Metroid. Yeah, yeah it, it just feels good that Nintendo Directs are back. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah that, that's a great point. And along with the trios after, there, there could be a lot of potential games and seeing big chunks of games in there. So. Yep. Mm, yeah, definitely. I, it's really exciting. And I'm I'm still at the same levels before, but that's still like really, really excited. I think my main question now comes down to, is Treehouse Live going to actually be live, or is it going to be like the last few where it was very clearly pre-recorded, but played live? It's... Oh. Go ahead, Joey. 
I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I don't know. <laughs> With it being three hours, I have a feeling it's going to be live. I think it will be proper live. They've done that before in the actual live yeah. tree houses. Uh, yeah, back during actual E3 when they when they were on location, they actually did them live. But I don't remember. No, I think after the Switch presentation, they did a live one. But I know like in 2020 they were pre-recorded. So for how long? Uh, yeah, do you remember how long those were though? Or those were. Um, I think that they were each like about in like 40 minutes to an hour. It, it wasn't like three hours. You know what? Actually, time, like, you're actually raising time. a good point. The, the more, the more I think about it. Um, I, I, for, they, eat, they, they could pre-record each segment. Yeah. Like, back for, for, for whatever reason, I was almost forgetting that just the logistics of everything. And especially based on like some preview events we've been to recently, where it seems like Nintendo's still very much observing like, you know, the, the social distancing and all that. Yeah, that would make actually a live treehouse a little bit more difficult, I think. Doable, but it definitely raises, it definitely makes everything more more difficult. So I actually do, I take it back. I think pre-record is, is a very likely possibility in this case, but I would be happy to be wrong. Maybe they can have like an outside stage or something. And uh... <laughs> Actually, if you have developers from Japan on it, that's like playing with fire. It's like, let's test out this internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a good point that <laughs> that they probably would be yeah, they'd be on Japan time and that'd be pretty late for them, right? So yeah, yeah, pre-record is actually making a lot a lot more sense. Although I mean, they wouldn't have to necessarily necessarily present it themselves. Treehouse uh, members could do it without the directors being there. So yeah, yeah. All right. Well, is that it, everyone? Nothing else. We're done. That's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, everyone, <laughs> sorry, Tom, did you have something? You were going to say something? Not going to no. say Game Pass will be on Switch. No. <laughs> that's, that's, that's been another long rumor, too, man. We got all these... N64 Online, just wanted to say yeah. that. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Themes right? for yeah. the whole yeah. menu. <laughs> <laughs> Folders. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, we're done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Stealth, thank you for joining us. And where can people follow you at if they want to hear uh, more stuff from you, including your predictions or uh, expectations or thoughts, whatever about E3? <laughs> Yeah, thank you all for having me. Um, you can follow me um, on Twitter at Stealth40K. Um, I talk about Nintendo quite a lot. Probably more than I do, which is impressive, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for joining us, Stealth, again. And uh, you had some very fun predictions. And uh, now we wait to see uh, who was right, if any of us were. Watch, we all, we are all wrong in everything. Wouldn't that be uh, disappointing? <laughs> so everyone... I'd be used to it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us. If you enjoyed this discussion, uh, make sure to uh, click that subscribe button, ring that bell. And, of course, stay tuned to Game of Splendor for tons more coming up from E3 in the very near future. With that, we'll catch you later. Bye, everyone. Don't forget our Smash predictions, a whole separate video.